Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the second webinar of the afternoon. Um, I'm Lucina Nixten, a European project manager here in Finance Innovation in Paris. Uh, for those who don't really know who we are, uh, let me quickly introduce um, our organization. So we are based in Paris, we are a financial cluster, and we gather about around 600 members from fintechs, banks, insurance companies, and asset managers. For more information, please follow the link shown in the chat box. In 2019, we became a partner of EIT Digital to collaborate with European partners and help businesses and entrepreneurs to bring digital innovation to market. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce and welcome our guest speakers, Guillaume Toublon, Alessandro Rodeda, Massimiliano Pizzi, Petra Aristo, and Andrea Ferretto Parot. We are going to be the content providers for this webinar. Before we begin, I want to cover a few topics. Uh, firstly, we kindly ask you to um, answer our survey questionnaire that you will find in the survey uh, sondage box uh, on the right side of your screen. So it will help us to understand your interest and your profile. Secondly, we, we will welcome your question throughout the webinar. So please feel free to submit all of your questions uh, in the question box, also on the right side of your screen. If we have time at the end of each presentation, we try to answer them. We have a lot of great content um, that we would like to cover with you today. So very quickly, let's have a look at the agenda. Just this one. Okay. Basically, three areas of discussion today. So the first one is an introduction of EIT Digital, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. EIT threatens Europe's position in the digital world. Then the two lead partners of the European project in which we are involved in our innovation will present respectively the innovation fin financial product currently in development. First project, EMS project, a digital movable asset registry based on blockchain will be presented by Alessandro and Massimiliano from SIA Italy, the leading partner. Then Crest project, a service helping investors and companies to protect their portfolio of assets against the fluctuation of currencies, exchange rates will be presented by Petra and Andrea from GFT and GRC Capital Management, the leading partner. So uh, my first introduction will be Guillaume Toublon, Managing Di Director of France of EIT Digital. He has more than 20 years of expertise in digital innovation, entrepreneurship and digital transformation in both big, co big corporations and startups. I would love you to tell us more what, what EIT Digital is doing and how it can, it can help launching on the market European fintech innovation. Guillaume, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to be to be here to uh, to talk about uh, what we are doing. I think uh, uh, we can do a lot uh, a lot of things with all of you. So let me uh, let me uh, jump directly on the second part of my of my uh, the second slide of my uh, my slide deck. Uh, you see that we have uh, three kind of activities uh, all over Europe. Our mission is. Uh, uh, we are a public entity. Uh, we've been created by the, the European Commission, and uh, our mission is to try to push for the creation or the development of digital champion all over Europe. And uh, of course, uh, fintech is one of the the area where we are uh, working. So you see that we are we have three uh, three uh, kind of action as, as i was saying the first one is on education of course there is no innovation without uh, without education so we work with partner universities all over europe 20 universities the big universities of tech uh, to train to educate 1000 uh, students digital students uh, every year so you see master students and uh, phd students uh, working on things like uh, cyber security data science uh, embedded system etc etc with also um, innovation and entrepreneurship courses to to prepare them to become entrepreneurs or at least to have the entrepreneur mindset the second action we are uh, we we have uh, in europe is we we help the deep tech uh, research 
uh, go out of the go out of the the the, the, the lab to the market. Uh, so this is what we call the innovation factory. I'm going to talk a, a bit more about it uh, after. Um, more or less, we co-invest with our partners uh, in 50 new innovations launched on the market every year. So we've been existing for 10 years. So you see 500 uh, innovation that are on the market in Europe already. And the last but not the least, uh, once all these innovations are startups have been created then uh, we are we have an accelerator to help them scale all over europe uh, so these are companies that have uh, found their uh, product market fit in their country uh, they've reached 1 million euro uh, revenue and they want to uh, grow at the international level and especially in europe and we can help them finding customers with, uh, within our ecosystem and uh, raising funds you see that uh, these companies already have uh, raised uh, less than a billion uh, um, a billion euros and uh, we help them directly uh, 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 to, to raise 100 million in Series A uh, for all the companies that we've been accelerating. So, uh, how do we do that? Uh, we are, our DNA is that we are an ecosystem, a pan European ecosystem. So, you see that we are uh, gathering uh, people from uh, big corporates, uh, SMEs, uh, tech universities, research and technology organizations that in 18 European countries, nine countries, and we have also a presence in the Silicon Valley, of course, as we are digital. Uh, you see some big names, I'm sure you, you, know, uh, you know some of them, uh, if not all of them. Uh, so this is a very active ecosystem. We are very proud to have uh, finance innovation uh, being part of it. Uh, and some people, uh, or some FinTech also uh, are working with us uh, every year, and especially last year and this, this year. So if we zoom now on the French uh, ecosystem, uh, it's based on 41 partners. Uh, we are, our president is Bruno Sportis, the CEO of INRIA. You might know him because he's been quite involved in the uh, Stop COVID recently. So you might have read a lot of things on, on this. Um, INRIA is a founding partner in France uh, for EIT Digital. You see that we are present in Paris, in Rennes, and in Sofia Antipolis to work with these, uh, these local ecosystems. And you, you see the different uh, type of partners that we have. So we have uh, very big names like uh, Agenico, NG, uh, Veolia, uh, um, and some uh, smaller smaller companies, uh, former startups that we've been accelerating that are now partners. Also, uh, Pôle de Compétitivité clusters. Uh, you see uh, Finance Innovation here, but there are others. A research Institute and uh, the, the universities I've been mentioning before. So now let's zoom on the innovation factory. What are we talking about? So every year we make a, um, we make a call for for proposal. So it, it has just ended. It was in March, uh, March and April. So the next one will be in March in April 2021. Um, and we we collect uh, we gather uh, of course all the different partners that uh, that are part of EIT Digital. So it's 300, it's not 270, it's a, a small typo, sorry for that. All the entrepreneurs uh, that work together to propose some, uh, either some new, uh, new DTEC startups or some new product from a portfolio of an existing company. You see the different areas where we want to uh, to invest. So digital industry, digital cities, digital well-being, digital tech, and digital finance. Of course, this is the, the topic that is interesting you uh, today. You see that France is the number one in terms of a level of investment uh, in the EIT digital uh, uh, European fintech community. So uh, we are a bit proud of that. Uh, this is for this year. And from what I've seen for next year, I think it should be the same also. You have some examples of, of some uh, uh, projects. Uh, you will see uh, after my presentation also two projects explaining what they are doing. Maybe I can just give you an example of the first one, which is Pay with a Smile. So it's a, um, a startup that has been created in Hungary with uh, partners from Spain, Hungary, and uh, I think Italy. Uh, they are providing a solution to pay with your biometrics, with a uh, facial recognition, with your fingerprints, with your uh, the, the, your eyes, retina, and, and others. So they are they are providing that, and there is the pilot uh, ongoing right now in Hungary. 
How can you be part of the innovation factory? So as I said, every year do we, we do a call. Uh, the idea is to gather uh, between two to five partners who are going to work together for 15 uh, months or, or a year. Uh, they will work uh, to, uh, they, they will rely, what, what is at the entry is a, is a POC coming from, uh, from, uh, from, from deep tech, so a deep tech solution, but also a business pain that has been uh, identified and also a way to address uh, to address the, the market that is related to this business pain so we 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 take as entry points three things the POC the technical side of course the business plan is there a business out of it and of course the go-to-market plan because we don't want to see only research project we want to see projects that are reaching the market because this is why we are here for and uh, the, the 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 people who are who are working in this uh, this innovation factory for for this year, uh, they uh, they um, uh, they put together all the technical things that all the different partners are bringing on the table, and then uh, the idea is to uh, before the end of the of the the, the 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 year to have some first customers to have the company created or if it's a new product, then to to uh, already have some uh, some revenues coming out of it. So even if it's more revenues, uh, we are very keen to see uh, the first uh, the first contract uh, signed during this uh, this period. So to to be part of this innovation factory, as I said, you need to become an EIT digital partner. Uh, you you need to propose a subject which is in in our five focus areas that i mentioned before so for most of you it would be fintech and to get between two to five partners uh, not more than five otherwise it's not agile enough and it's it's very hard to to uh, to get in uh, in, a, in the right planning a year is very short and huh, to launch uh, to launch a new product or startup and we're asking to have people coming from different uh, countries because we are a European uh, institution. So uh, we want to promote that. So what, what do you get? Uh, of course, you get the access to the different talents, uh, what we call postmasters, young graduates from our master school that are keen to work with you for the year, for the launch of your startup, the launch of your new product. Uh, PhDs, they can help you also uh, using their, their research uh, results or PhDs that want to create companies and that could involve your company in their uh, in their startup creation and of course we are putting money uh, together with you it's a co-investment uh, by eit digital and the partners to give you an idea uh, every year we co-invest 50 uh, 50 50 uh, 50 million uh, euros of investment uh, out of this 50 million we eit digital invest around 60 percent out of it uh, on the different project, 50 million uh, euros invested for 50 uh, projects. So it's around 1 million for, for a project and 600K coming out of uh, EIT digital money. The rest is provided by the partners. When we are talking about provided, it's it's time and right? it's uh, it's uh, people working uh, working on the project. Uh, what we are asking for at the end of the project is a sustainability uh, because we want to maintain our investment from year to year, and the European Commission is decreasing from year to year is uh, is is a subvention, is a budget, is grant. Sorry. Uh, so when we create a startup, we ask for shares in the in the startup, and we when we launch a product we have we ask for a revenue share which is limited to a certain ROI uh, so that we can maintain our level of investment from year to year so uh, each year uh, it happens um, between uh, March and beginning of March and end of April so the next one will be in March April 2021 we organize a lot of brokerage events where people present uh, either a business pain that they, they, uh, they have identified in a specific uh, vertical and they ask for some uh, technical uh, solutions to help them either you have people who have a technical solution a wonderful algorithm or a wonderful blockchain solution but they they are looking for a market where they could uh, use it or a business pain to solve uh, based on their solution so these brokerage events are the right place uh, for people to exchange around that and to create the different uh, uh, teams uh, for the innovation factory and we are going to organize these uh, these events uh, in December this year, and you will have another also uh, others in March during the, the cold period. 
Um, for the for the global planning, you submit your project in uh, in let's say April. You have an answer in early July. We just gave the answers for the, the this year uh, submissions, and the project can start in October or in January as you want. If uh, if uh, if the project is uh, is uh, well uh, ranked by us. The other possibility of, uh, of, of uh, us working with you is the EIT Digital Accelerator, what, uh, what I presented in the introduction. So as I said, this is not for new innovative projects. This is for existing companies that have reached more or less 1 million euros of revenues and that want to scale all over Europe. So for that, what we, what we bring is a team of uh, 20 people in our accelerator uh, 30 people, sorry, 20 uh, are dedicated to business development to find uh, uh, new customers with you and 10 are, are here to help you uh, raise funds uh, with VCs, corporate VCs. Um, so you can see some, some names of some uh, fintech companies that are working together, uh, that are working uh, now with us. Uh, I can give the example of a French company which is Zeros, working in uh, AI for insurance. I'm sure you, you know about this company. They were the winner of uh, the EIT Digital Challenge of last year. Uh, we are organizing every year uh, um, uh, a challenge for, for, for digital startups all over Europe to, uh, to nominate the five uh, best deep tech startups in which we, uh, we believe. Uh, and there was, was, was one of them. Um, uh, so, if you want to, if you are interested in this uh, in this accelerator, you see there is a. You can go on our website, or there is a, a URL, a URL based uh, on on the bottom of the slide here, uh, where you have a get in touch uh, button. Also, you can get in touch with me, and I will connect you with the, the right people uh, in our organization. And. Um, Finally, just as a conclusion, uh, I would like to highlight the different advantages of being a, a partner of EIT Digital. Uh, when we ask our different partners why uh, they are with us and why they stay with us, because generally uh, the, the, the partners stay uh, from year to year with us, the, the, the main point is to join a unique pan-European ecosystem of more than 300 partners. It should be more this year because we have uh, seen a lot of uh, new partners this year. Uh, it's pretty unique because uh, you have every you have different kinds of partners. As I said, universities, technical uh, uh, research and technical uh, organizations, uh, SMEs, big corporations in all kinds of sectors. So uh, uh, it's quite easy for you to find uh, some partners to to partner with in the innovation factory, for instance. The the second point, uh, the second advantage is to have the ability to to participate in our innovation factory that I just described, and also all the education activities that we have, which we call the entrepreneurial academy, to link your company with the students, to have some interactions, uh, uh, to propose some business case to the students, uh, to to work on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera many many possibilities here uh, there is also a possibility to, for you to hire some phd students uh, com coming out of our uh, of our community we can help you financially on that so if you are willing to uh, access to the deep tech research uh, it's it is something that we are providing and also, also uh, interactions with our master school students with internships uh, uh, jobs etc uh, of course, we, uh, the, our accelerator uh, is a good connection also for you if you are looking for some uh, new technologies uh, on deep tech, on um, AI or, or cybersecurity or whatever. So we can do that. And, uh, uh, and last but not least, uh, uh, it, it depends if you're a small company or not, but uh, if you, when you become a, a partner of EIT Digital, you get instant access in 18 offices all over uh, Europe uh, and in our Silicon Valley's office. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. 
So, uh, if you want to, uh, if you are interested in all these uh, subjects that I uh, that I presented to you, uh, if you want to know more about us, don't hesitate to come to me. You you have my direct email or to my colleague that is not here today, but she's managing the the different uh, relationship with the partner or the the potential partners, Lydia Zeruki. Uh, don't hesitate to come to us. We will be very happy to to answer to your question and to to see if we can collaborate. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Guillaume, for this really interesting presentation. Um, we not we not have uh, enough time to answer the questions, but maybe we can you can answer the question from Nib. Nib. Sorry for the, the pronunciation. Uh, so the question is: Other than funding, are there support or guide and guidance on, for example, legal accounting, etc.? No, we don't. Uh, we don't provide any guidance here. We let uh, the different project owners manage uh, manage everything. Of course, we can we can flag some uh, some questions. Or we are very uh, um, uh, something that is important for us is of course the, the the IP at the beginning of the project. We we ensure that the, all the partners uh, agree on the on the the IP. Otherwise, they, there is no possible innovation. But we 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 don't uh, we don't give you uh, uh, monitoring or coaching on this uh, on this subject. Uh, the, the reason why is that is that we are not staffed for. We are not enough to do that. We have uh, more than fifty projects every year, and we we cannot go in that level of details, unfortunately. Thank you for asking for answering the question. Um, so do not hesitate to. Ask all the, of your question uh, to send all of your question uh, to Guillaume or Lydia or even uh, my email address. Uh, thank you, Guillaume. So next on our roster are Alessandro Roveda and Massimiliano Pizzi, who will present EMS project, the Advanced Asset Issuing Model and Service. So Alessandro is head of Capital Market Innovative Solution at SIA in Italy. In, his, in this position, is leading the capital market portfolio, and Massimiliano Pizzi works as product manager, focusing on the development and management of the movable collateral registry solution. Massimiliano and Alessandro, the floor is yours. Thanks, Lucille, and good afternoon, everyone, and thanks, uh, thanks uh, so much for joining uh, us. So let me give you a brief overview of the contest uh, and the market of our uh, um, of our solution, the solution that we are going to to present to you. Uh, the aims of the, our solution is to improve the credit to SMEs. A recent study of uh, World Bank uh, reports that 80% uh, of uh, loans require collateral. And uh, if one, uh, if uh, while on the one hand, uh, fixed properties like uh, uh, like a building, uh, like a land, uh, is uh, usually accepted, uh, other form of collateral like movable, uh, such as receive inventory, uh, intellectual property, frequently are not accepted. But what is uh, why it's important because movable asset account. Uh, a large part of SME's asset uh, because they use uses uh, are use useful funding source for this kind of company that uh, in, the, in the in this stage are often uh, lack of movable asset like uh, like another interesting concept of movable asset is the pool of movable asset that SMEs can offer as a collateral because it's less vulnerable and uh, less risky to like to to likely to, to default in the event uh, of economy um, downtown. Uh, so so the, the movable asset uh, mm, as a collateral could enable SMEs to borrow more loans. But unfortunately, as you can see on the figure on the right, uh, movable asset, uh, movable properties uh, remain less than 27%. Uh, of collateral used for receive credit. Meanwhile, land and real estates uh, are used for in more than 70, 74%. So uh, how 
mobile collateral today are managed in the financial ecosystem where they use the movable uh, collateral and which is the tool that the ecosystem of financial institution use to uh, support the movable uh, the movable asset uh, listen uh, listen um, uh, massimiliano about that thank you alessandro and hello everyone uh, the current solution is based on movable collateral registry but what is a movable collateral registry? It's a registry where notices of a movable asset used as collateral are recorded and published. And, and it has two important implications. On one hand, it allows lenders to check borrowers' credit worthiness. And on the other hand, it permits ranking and uh, prioritization of lenders for each collateral. But, uh, but today, the situation of credit markets and some existing collateral register presents some limitation. First of all, if a country doesn't have an, eff an efficient movable collateral registry, even, even the simplest secure transaction law can be ineffective, making the credit market inefficient. Then the lack of trust and the problem of asymmetric information that limits a wider use of movable asset as collateral. Moreover, the assets used can be damaged or lost with an increase of monitoring and managing costs incurred by creditors and the market. The market where it's possible to trade this collateral are, are not liquid, so this may make it difficult for banks to leave. Because of these, we collected feedback from different institutions, as World Bank or Central Authority of some European countries in charge of managing the collateral registry. And the result is our distributed registry that we have called Regon. Regon is a fully digitalized platform native speaking blockchain, and it addresses some limitation mentioned before. But how? First, with automatic real-time notification, each participant to the process is automatically notified in real time if a details of a notice or its status changes. It has advanced analytics, which provide to creditors all necessary information regarding the borrower credit warnings and collateral valuation. The, the platform is available 24 seven as required by World Bank and Ancetral guidelines. And as generally, we design our solution following the principles set out in these guidelines, making Regon an international recognized and accepted registry and with the role given to the creditors. Creditors can manage directly on our platform the notices and, pub and publish them without intermediaries. But here it's important to explain that the, the setup of Regoin is quite flexible. In fact, it has been designed to allow different types of, of permissions and controls depending on the transaction law of the country where it's being used. And at the least point is the search functionality. All data published on Regon can be found easily and immediately with different keys. And an easy to use design is the basic concept that we had in mind during the development of the platform. But uh, now, the blockchain. How can blockchain help our solution, Alessandro? Yeah, uh, our solution, uh, as I said, Max, is native speaking blockchain because blockchain can definitely help the collateral registries because uh, the blockchain can reduce information asymmetries. One of the limits of the current, uh, uh, current some current uh, registries based on the um, 
traceable and auditable transaction and improve the trust among the stakeholder leveraging on the ownership validation by design offered by design from, from blockchain technologies. Uh, the block can potentially change also the, the business model because currently the uh, registry are in charge of some authorities, some central authorities. Tomorrow, with our solution, uh, the, the ecosystem can decide if maintain one authority for certain function or decided to disintermediate all uh, authorities. Uh, the, the blockchain can also create some uh, selling opportunities because uh, it can uh, offer a new value added. If you think uh, to the tokenization of uh, collateral, the tokenization means uh, offer a secondary market where supply and demand can find the match. And last but not least, I, I just read uh, I just read a question about the profile, the risk profile between static and movable asset. Uh, it's right, it's quite different, it's more complicated um, assets, the risk profile for movable asset for this reason, because uh, this is one of the limit in using movable asset for this reason, we adopt not just the blockchain technology, but also the IoT platform. IoT is a module of our solution that allow each creditor node to offer vector some uh, uh, advanced functionality that are basically sensor and so on, that allow the creditor to track and monitor the the, the, the collateral, the asset, such as machinery or other asset, in terms of uh, how do you the the the, the vector use where is the asset, and this can absolutely improve the the, the, the manage of risk uh, profile. Uh, but um, blockchain, but what is under the hood? of the blockchain in our solution. We, we have designed the solution protocol, basically uh, based on existence. So the, the ability of certified existence of uh, is the foundation of notarization. And uh, the uh, blockchain technology is optimized to carry out this kind of function. So uh, the data about notice, about credit, uh, can be saved on blockchain based on configuration, based on, uh, on, on GDPR rules and the level of confidence uh, of, of, uh, of ecosystem in the country about the blockchain. But what is important is that uh, on, on the blockchain, uh, the, the system upload just the hash, so like a, a, finger, a fingerprint of the asset and any modification of, uh, of such asset are detect, uh, trace it, and notify in, in real time among all nodes, so among all banks that participated to the, to the, to, to, to the ecosystem. Uh, last slide is just about, is about our technical infrastructure, it is a, is a, a synthetic slide uh, to, to explain that uh, the solution is based on a subsystem of module, uh, to address uh, different uh, country needs and the regulation level, as I uh, already said. Uh, we can deliver the solution uh, basically um, on a private blockchain consortium or as well as on uh, public blockchain. This is because we have segregated the level of interaction with the blockchain, the technical level, with the wallet and the gateway of uh, blockchain nodes from the transaction workflow that helps to manage the transaction of notice from creation to, to delivery, to, 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 to close the, uh, the notice, and the transaction warehouse. Another important piece of this solution because uh, it's not just a store of all transaction for an um, ex post analysis, but also is the system that allows the banks to integrate other data to improve the quality of the asset and, and, and the credit that they, that they provide, that they can provide to the SME's uh, world. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, the IoT models, 
that uh, allow uh, lenders to monitor, to monitor the collateral user. And uh, to, to give just an example, to extreme example, through this kind of technology, the, the banks can, can disable, if necessary, the, the use of collateral to facilitate an enforcement after a default uh, uh, of, um, of debtor. So I'm, I'm close with, with, uh, with the presentation. Uh, and so please don't, don't hesitate to, to, to contact me directly or if we have some, uh, some minutes to, to send a question about the solution. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It was really interesting. Um, so you answered the question uh, of Niv. Thank you. Uh, he asked a lot of questions. Uh, maybe you can answer to one question. Um, maybe what information about customers and their Collateral may be shared between banks and especially between national borders? Yes. Um, as previously explained, our solution is an integral part of a well-functioning credit market. So for this reason, we built our platform with the idea to model it according to the transaction law of the country of adoption. So this makes it possible to customize our registries. And creditors' information doesn't need to be transmitted or made public if it's not required by law. So, in general, the information to be shared can be chosen. Okay, thank you. Um, we don't have so much time left to answer, to ask other questions. So, thank you for in your presentation. And uh, do not hesitate also to you ask all of your question uh, and to send it by email uh, to my email address or either Massimiliano or Alessandro's yeah, sure. email. Um, next presentation. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, next presentation. So it's about the CRES project and Petra Risto from GRC Capital Management and Andrea Ferreto Parodi will present the currency edging and risk management, management solution. So Petra Risto leads GRC research, research and Development Department. Today, she is responsible for the coordination and technical management of GRC tasks in the current H2020 project and as well as EIT digital projects. And Andrea Ferreto Parodi is an innovation consultant at GFT Technologies in Italy, he is responsible of the technology transfer activities. Guys, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lucille, and um, hello, everybody. And thanks for this introduction. So, excuse me, this was the wrong sequence. Um, let me introduce the whole team of behind this activity to you. Um, apart from JLC Capital Management, um, which is an asset management company located in Berlin um, that I work for, and GFT that was just mentioned. We have also on board Atos, um, responsible for parts of the technical implementation, in particular um, the front end. And on the dissemination and marketing side, we have Finance Innovation, responsible for the go-to-market strategy. And we have eGroup as another partner responsible for product validation. So CRES, what is it about? CRES is um, an acronym standing for Currency Hedging and Risk Management Service. Um, that means the activity is developing a platform together with a, an automated service that shall help managing currency risks um, that will generate trading signals um, buy or sell signals for building up hedging positions um, that can also automatically execute these signals and um, connect the user with experts in 
in the case that a more um, fine-tuned solution is needed. The background currency risk. Um, on the left hand, we can see two perspectives how to look at, for example, um, a portfolio of investments. The typical ways, or one way, is to look at the types of assets um, that are part of the portfolio, but you could also look at the portfolio with respect to the different currency exposures that the investments are denominated in. Um, and this, of course, um, and, and currency risk is um, the risk of um, changing value with the fluctuation of the one currency against the other. This not only concerns um, investors um, with um, portfolios of investments, but could um, also concern anybody who's um, dealing with um, uh, other partners in uh, in foreign currencies. So, um, for example, outstanding bills or debts or liabilities and denominated in a foreign currency, uh, currency as uh, global companies have, um, and uh, even SMEs like travel agencies, for example, are also um, exposed to currency risk. So there's a, uh, a broad uh, number of uh, potential users. And in order to give you an impression of the impact that currency risk can have, um, we have the figure on the left-hand side that shows, as an example, for the year uh, 2018, how different currencies have changed against the euro. On the left hand, we have, for example, um, the Australian dollar that, uh, so an investment in the Australian dollar would have gained 3.8% just without any changes of the underlying investment. And on the other hand, uh, on the right hand side, we would have, um, we can see the US dollar investment that would have made a loss of about 3.8% and the largest loss could have occurred um, for investments in um, uh, the Japanese yen about 7%. So there is, that, that gives an indication of the significance of this uh, type of risk. Um, about CRES um, and how it works, um, when we speak about the user, we say investor here on the left-hand side. So an investor um, needs to enter uh, the amount at the currencies um, that his investor investments are exposed in. Um, however, we do not need to know any details about the investments or the underlyings, just the amount and the currency. Um, then the user can set some risk preferences and some tolerance levels, and he can also um, select whether to, um, to execute the hedging positions via the platform or um, whether he would like to prefer um, to, to deal with them himself. Um, the interaction with the platform um, consists of um, information collection about um, the customer profile. Um, the platform is responsible for monitoring um, the different uh, currency exchange rates, and it also receives the trading signals from strategies that are run in an external platform, um, um, like, for example, TradeStation. Um, and um, the, the third major component is the execution platform, where the Crest platform is connected to, and where um, the price signals can be executed as, um, and where uh, live quotes can be received from um, and forwarded to the user. The main benefits of using CRES as a platform is, um, of course, the overall goal of reducing currency risk um, for investors and um, and um, other concerned uh, participants. Um, and also the automation of this service um, that is 
currently um, based on a manual process, um, which means it's more cost intensive. And through the automation, um, we um, will be able to offer um, a competitive uh, solution concerning pricing and um, also provide higher liquidity and um, access to smaller participants uh, to this service. Um, the automatic order execution, of course, is a benefit and um, the additional, the access to expertise um, if a user needs a more tailor-made solution. Um, what are the underlying technologies? Um, the service is based above all on a set of trading models or trading strategies that have been implemented by JRC. Um, and that um, analyze real-time market price data and uh, generate trading signals. And we separate these trading models into different types, short-term, medium-term, long-term models, and we cover the, um, uh, the foreign currency exposures that uh, an, a user might, might have uh, by applying models from these three different categories and this is how we achieve a dynamic solution for hedging in contrast to a static one um, on the right hand on this slide we can see how the hedging positions are increased and decreased again depending on the trend of the uh, of the in, in this example euro dollar exchange rate so with the rising rate we can see the hedge position is increased and we can see um more towards the right that there are larger gaps where hedging is decreased and um this means that the losses that a static hedge position would produce in uh, terms in times when it is not actually needed these losses can be cut through this dynamic hedging solution. Um, in addition, we have, of course, um, some algorithms behind um, for the execution and also the algorithms that determine the allocation of models to a specific user and um, the calculation of possessions, position sizes. I would like now to hand over to Andrea, who can explain give a little explanation about the high-level architecture of the platform. Please, Andrea. Thank you very much, Petra. So in, uh, in this slide, uh, you, you can see a schematic view of the high-level architecture of CRESS. So uh, starting from the top of the image, we have the, the front-end interfaces, which are separately an interface for the customer, which means uh, the companies and the individual traders of the companies uh, to, to manage the onboarding process, creation of the profiles and of the relevant preferences, which are mainly investments, currencies and exposures to be edged, as already told by Petra, and the selection of the best trading model scenario uh, fitting his risk and timing preferences. Then we have also a manager interface for JRC for uh, system administration and uh, customer support analysis and management of the, the customer portfolios. This front end interface uh, is uh, connected to a central service, uh, which is uh, basically a set of backend APIs uh, providing uh, the general core services of the platform, mainly regarding uh, the management of the, the customer registration data and uh, the customer position details, as well as the management of the, the, the requests of, inf of information from other CREST components, like the requests for the back tests from the back testing engine and of signal history from the component called adapter, which I, I'm going to explain. This backend core of APIs is connected with a central database, uh, which is the unique uh, data storage point of the, f and the, of the platform, and this is also connected with uh, the, the other elements. The backtesting engine is uh, a very important component of CRESS, and this is uh, the reason why we consider it a separate element of the architecture, because indeed, 
Uh, this is the process component uh, which uh, allows uh, the customer to choose among the different trading model scenarios uh, available uh, to perform the hedging to his own investment portfolios. So in particular, using the information of the customer profile and the proposed trading model scenario, the backtesting algorithm produces a graphical trend over the last three years comparing a non-edged exposure with the hedged crest portfolio according to the selected scenario. This helps the customer to evaluate and accept the proposed scenario or refuse it and do another test based on a different selection of, uh, of the scenario. The selected scenario is then stored in the customer profile and from now on it is used to determine the edging ratio and generate the trading signals for the investors or for the broker. Finally, we have the adapter, which is a, a middleware component responsible for connection and integration of CRESS to the different external parts of the platform, in particular, to, to ensure that all the relevant signals uh, coming from the trading stations are correctly dispatched through the platform and that orders are forwarded to the broker for execution. And this is also responsible to retrieve the signal history from the trading station and to generate the signal alerts to dispatch to the customer through the, the front end. Outside the Crest perimeter, we have also uh, the trading station, which is the actual interface towards the market and is responsible for the trading model ex execution and signals generation, and a broker system, which is uh, the actual responsible of uh, executing uh, the, the orders. As I said, the trading station is an outside the component to Crest. Indeed, it will be used the trade station, a quite well-known uh, professional e electronic trading platform for financial market traders, uh, which will be used uh, for modelization and training of the signals. While as a broker system, it will be used the uh, 360T, which is also a very widely used platform uh, inside the German banking system, offering a very large panel of services across the entire trading lifecycle uh, workflow. Now I'm leaving again the word to Petra for final uh, remarks and uh, conclusions. Ooh. Sorry. Yes. Oh, Petra, yes. yes. Now it's okay. <laughs> I can continue? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, the, the main features are the identification and quantification of currency risk, of course, and it's real-time monitoring um, with the help of our um, different types of trading models. Um, the generation of signals for building up or reducing um, the hedging positions. Um, as for, for execution of these positions, we can use either spot or forward in, as instruments. And um, we offer, apart from a static solution for hedging, we also offer um, a small number of dynamic hedging models, um, depending on the, the risk um, level that a user might be uh, wanting to accept. So thank you very much. Um, and are there any questions? Please. I can't see in the question box uh, any question, but uh, yes, I have a question. Um, maybe is the service also usable by private investors? Um, not at this stage of the development. So we're first of all um, focusing on institutional investors of all sizes, um, but through our selection of the uh, 360T interface, we can assume that um, almost every institutional investor may already be connected um, to this execution platform, which will speed up the, the onboarding um, process decisively. But in a second level, depending on the demand that we observe uh, once the product is on the market, um, we would also address private investors and, uh, of course, um, connect to, to different brokers more appropriate for this type of uh, users. Okay, thank you. And why did you select 360T for execution? 
Yes, as, as I said already, um, because we assume that uh, almost all institutional investors are already connected to it. Thank you. Um, maybe we have also a question for Massimiliano and uh, Alessandro from Niebe. I forgot to ask you, uh, are you here, Massimiliano and Alessandro? Yes. Uh, Niebe is, was asking if my financial gain for blocking the publishing of data about a collateral by filling blocks is higher than the cost. It will pose a new pro limit for the value of the collateral. Is that question? Uh... Yeah, uh, I'm not sure to have catch the question. It's about the cost of gas, I, I, I suppose. So uh, as I said, we, we, su as, uh, we support two delivery types. So in the first case where the delivery is in uh, the uh, private blockchain consortium, this kind of um, problem, um, there is no this kind of problem and uh, related to the public network, so the main net of Ethereum, because uh, we use Ethereum as a, as, a, as a blockchain, the cost of gas for the type of transaction uh, that we use is very, very low. Uh, so the, there is no impact uh, for, for uh, in respect to the cost of collateral. I'm not sure if I... Okay, uh, I'm not sure if um, it was uh, okay, Nibi. You can uh, say it in the chat box if it was okay. Um, I also forgot to okay. ask, and I have another question, uh, the last one. Uh, which functionality will, platform, will the platform have beyond a pure database about the EMS platform? We, I think we didn't answer this question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, through our platform, creditors will be able to, to register notices directly on chain. So, uh, information are recorded on a blockchain, they are immutable, traceable, and also uh, auditable. The, this makes the system safer, prioritizing the rights of the creditor over the, the other. So our solution is open to other fintech and integration of other services. Uh, imagine, for example, a secondary market for exchange collateral or an integration with directly with uh, uh, I don't know, a rating agency in order to offer a more comprehensive and cost-effective services. And as uh, mentioned before, Alessandro, there are potential applications of the DLT uh, to create uh, reliable record, uh, records sorry, uh, of the origin of uh, raw materials that, uh, that can add the value if properly combined. Thank you. I think we are You're done. Um, thank you for this two very interesting presentation. It's really um, interesting to be part of these two projects. Um, so I would like to thank all of you who attended this webinar and all the speakers for their very interesting contributions. Note that uh, this webinar is recorded and so you are welcome to go back and re to review it later. Um, I have also mentioned all our email address on the chat box, so do not hesitate to send all of your questions if you have. And um, thank you, everyone, Andrea, Massimiliano, Alessandro, and Petra. Thank you. Too. Thank you thank for you, your time, you. and your, your contribution, and uh, it was really interesting. And um, see you later. Mm. Bye bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.